Put a roll in. <coughs> is it John Stevens, the leader of the band tonight? Okay, John. Okay. It's, does he play anything too, or is he just conducting? Saxophone. Saxophone. Alto. We're here at Jazz Live San Diego. Let's try that one more time. Sure. I have a, a new intro. What's that jingling? Is that you? Oh, that was me. Yeah, it was me. All right, don't jingle. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> We're here at Jazz Live on San Diego's Jazz 88.3 with Barbara Morrison. Welcome back to Jazz Live San Diego. Well, thank you so much, Vince. It's been a long time since you've been here. You played Jazz Live. Uh, back on Tuesday, July 7th, 2009. I can't believe it's been that long. It's been a long time. So with the music of Dinah Washington in the spotlight tonight, let's start right there. You co-wrote the musical theater production, I Want to Be Loved, about the former Ruth Lee Jones. When were you first introduced to her music? I think I was about eight, about eight years old. We had a hi-fi. My dad used to play all the old records, and she was... The, the first song I, I learned of Dinah Washington was uh, Where Are You? And I can't remember who the composer was, but I remember being about eight years old singing, Where Are You? <laughs> and were you singing at that time? You yes. You grew up singing. Uh, tell I us did. a little bit about that. What were you doing at the time when you heard, first heard Dinah? Well, I think I was being a clown. Uh -huh. My grandmother was... Uh, so excited when she when I would sing stuff for her and then I dance. She loved Jackie Wilson, so I'd do the splits and, and she just she was real chubby and she would crack and her blue belly would go. Hoo, 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 hoo. So that I started singing. And then I start, I started at Shiloh Baptist Church, where we had a lady. Uh, she was so sophisticated. She'd wear her furs in the winter in Detroit, of course, and and she wouldn't she would go hurry over. <laughs> When I would sing, and she was so funny. So we'd go around going, Hallelujah. <laughs> and uh, so I, I, I decided to enter a contest, Tip Top Bread. You had to, you had to save all the bread wrappers, and the person with the most bread wrappers won. And at that time, Stevie Wonder had a song out called Castles in the Sand. So I learned Castles in the Sand, and I saved up all these bread wrappers, and I got a chance to be in the finals. I didn't win. But they played me on the radio about nine times, and I was about ten then. Mm -hmm. I was about ten years old, and then uh, as I got through high school and stuff, my dad kind of said, you know, I feel sorry for you. And I said, what do you feel sorry for me for? He said, well, everybody wants you. Your mother wants you to be a nurse. Your aunt wants you to be a teacher. What do you want to be? I said, I want to be a singer like you, Dad. My dad was a great singer. So he went to school with Barry Gordy. Mm -hmm. So at that time, Motown had moved to the West Coast. And he said, go out there and look up my friend. Tell him you're my daughter. Well, about 15 years later, I met Barry Gordy. <laughs> but I, I came to Los Angeles, and I, I mean, I went to Los Angeles and joined a band called the L.A. Smog Control. The L.A. Smog Control? The L.A. Smog Control. Appropriate for uh, 1973, uh, 19, uh, the early part of the 70s. Yeah. But the drummer was the drummer for the Jackson 5, so he was well connected. But I like the old stuff. I like the old people and the old music. That's how I got hooked up in jazz. Mm. You've always been known for your ability to sing in many different styles and idioms, from pop to R&B to blues, much like Dinah Washington, too. Mm -hmm. And I've read that Dinah was somewhat scorned for that trait, even uh, accused of selling out her art to commerce and bad taste in one uh, thing that I read. Yeah. Um, has that part of uh, either Dinah's legacy been something you've given any thought to, the way that you guys match up uh, in that way, singing many different styles of music? As, as I did my research, I, I learned that too, mm -hmm. but a lot of it had to do with race. But I think um, I didn't really care. I didn't really care what people thought. And one of the reasons my dad used to say to me all the time, and I, if he was alive right now, I would scorn him for that. He would always say, you know, baby, you can't change the world. You can't change the world, so stick. I, I, he better not tell Queen Latifah that, or <laughs> or Bill Gates, or Steve Jobs, because there are people nowadays who can change the world, and uh, Dinah was one. She was the one that changed the world. She was one of the first to have her 
face on a CD cover, I mean an album cover, you know, as opposed to Ella. Ella spent a whole day in the airport in England because nobody knew she was black. You know, she sat there waiting for a ride to go to work and all they ever heard was this sweet voice on the radio as opposed to Betty Grable and Marilyn Monroe. They, you saw the pictures of the pretty ladies, you know, and, but you didn't see a picture of Ella and back in 41. So I said, she, Dinah changed the world. I mean, at one time she had 29 records on the charts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that seems to be more of an asset than a liability to be able to sing in many different styles. I think so, because today, today is the day of the reality shows. And these girls are getting on, on the, and they're, it, there is no color. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're singing everything. I mean, Elvis, what did Elvis Presley get his Grammys in? Gospel. Gospel music. All of his Grammys were in gospel. Mm -hmm. So I said all that to say, the, the, the Internet is colorblind. You don't even have to put... You don't need to put a picture on it now for things to take off for you. You can YouTube and Twitter and a whole lot of other things. So the world has changed. And Dinah, I think, was one of the singers that started the change because she could do so many genres of music. I mean, well, you've uh, also always been associated with big bands like the Count Basie Orchestra, Clayton Hamilton, uh, Doc Severinsen's big band. What is it about the big band that's right for the music of Dinah Washington? It's like a big furry coat, man. You just jump off in there. And some of those, uh, you know, back in the day, the singers had to sit on stage. And they had to sit there the whole time, and they got up, and they did one or two songs. Until Frank Sinatra came along, and that's when the girls started taking off their clothes and throwing it them and started going, and then they, they start paying attention to singers. But before that, but it was always with a big band. That was the kind of music of the day until the Beatles came along and and, and and shut Basie and Duke Ellington. Those people had to start playing with quartets and stuff because it was just too hard to carry a, a big band around. But it's, it, it just makes me feel so good. <laughs> and I think people like it. The people that remember the, those days, they like it and they don't have enough entertainment. Uh, I remember the Lawrence Welk show. I was a little kid, but it was it was for the older people. They said, we need another Lawrence Welk show. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about the band that you brought with you tonight. That's led my by big band. John Stevens. Tell us a little I bit about that. I am proud. Well, I always wanted to do that. Like I told you, 30 years ago, I did a little synopsis, you know, a treatment. And I had a, a gentleman named Art Hillary write me some charts of dinosaurs, only for uh, uh, Nonette for only for nine pieces, and, but I always wanted to do it. And then one of my friends, uh, who was a big television star, she did Dinah. And then I thought, I said, oh no, I can't do Dinah. She'll think I stole it from her. She'll think that I'm mean or whatever. So I just put it on the burner. But then she stopped doing it. So I said, yay, I'm jumping out of here. And my friends were saying, yeah, I'll do it anyway. A lot of people do this. A lot of people do that. But she was my friend, and I didn't want to do it. So this time, Bill Liston, who arranged a lot of my seat, uh, charts for the Los Angeles, the Long Beach Municipal Big Band, he started uh, this movie, The Pirates of the Caribbean. He started doing music for that. I said, oh, so so like, come on, write me some charts, write me some charts. And he did. And we start and we... Uh, made uh, a big band CD, and it was it was so successful. I said, "Okay, it's time to do Dinah." Okay, you know what's gonna make my thing different from her thing? She had a trio. I'm gonna have a big band. So I put I got these guys together. They were rehearsing at the Union, and I I when I came back from Europe, I started a performing arts center, and I said, "You know what? I'm gonna have a big band in my." So I went there and I said, come on you guys, come over and, and practice at my place and we'll, whatever we get, whatever we throw in the pool, we'll split it. And that's how it started. Nice. Well, I wanted to talk a little bit about your very new release, brand new release. Yay. I think we debuted it last week or the week before here Thank at Jazz you so 88. Much. It's called I Love You, Yes I Do. <laughs> and it's a new release that features you with the great Houston person, 
not in a big band setting. Um, <laughs> tell us a little bit about uh, what you're doing on I Love You, Yes I Do. Well, first of all, um, I, in 1985, I went over to Europe for a tour, and Bull Moose Jackson was in the band. And his, one of his biggest hits was, I love you, yes I do. And here's this 70-something year, I, I think I was in my late 20s, and he was 70-something, but he had never been to Europe. And he had big, two big records I know of. I want a bow-legged woman, that's all, and I love you, yes I do. And these white kids all got together one day. He was like a cook at a college. And they heard him sing and they said, hey, that sounds pretty good. So they all pulled it. Think of this, college kids pulling their money together to send this black guy to Europe. And he had never been before, and that was one of the reasons they wanted to send him. But they didn't, he didn't have anybody to take care of. And he ended up in our band. So um, I got a wheelchair and pushed him all, to all the countries we went to. I made sure there was a, I got a wheelchair at the airport and pushed him everywhere. I mean, he had never been, as a matter of fact, um, every night he would empty out the mini bar and put, and put it in a shoebox. So when we had to check out, <laughs> We were in Switzerland, and the, and the, and the, and the clerk says, okay, that'll be 2,000, so on, so on, so far. He goes, hmm? <laughs> and Johnny Otis, being the artist that he is, he, he drew a caricature of Boom was going, hmm? <laughs> but that song, he was this really short man, this big moose head, that's why they called him moose head, singing, I love you, yes, I do, to thousands. I mean, we had like 50,000 people in the audience, and like in a coliseum, and these people were fainting like they, like they, they were the Beatles there, you know, because they loved melodies. And when he would sing that song, I said, whoa, if I ever had that effect on people. So when we started this project, I, I never forgot that experience. And I said, ooh, whatever you do, I don't care how many tunes we do, I want this album, this CD to be named, I Love You, Yes I Do. And that's how that came. Well, your collaborator, Houston Person, is also very well known for his work with another great singer, Etta, Etta Jones. Etta Jones. So there's obvious comparisons to the work that you're doing with him, this, and uh, his work with Etta. Um, was the spirit of Etta ever anywhere in uh, in your recording? In the first project, mm -hmm. I did uh, I'll Be Seeing You. Mm -hmm. And that was the way Etta ended all her shows. Mm -hmm. I'll be seeing you in all of your... So, my live at the Dakota, mm -hmm. my first project with Houston. And then Sunday Kind of Love, no, I just went crazy. Mm -hmm. Sunday Kind of Love. I did all the songs, all the songs that I liked. Right. And then on this one, I did all the songs that the band liked. But there was a couple that I threw in there, and I Love You, Yes I Do was one of them. Mm -hmm. And Living for the Love of You. You guys been playing that. I mm -hmm. kind of heard it. Well, I wanted to just touch on another aspect of your career, and that's music education. And I was reading that you're an adjunct assistant professor of jazz performance at the UCLA Herb Alpert School of Music, and also founder and director of your own music school in, in yeah. Englewood. Is that part of your uh, performing arts center? No, That's... you know, that that is in the past. Hmm. My performing arts center is in Los Angeles. Now. Right. Yeah. So then t tell us a little bit about uh, what you do as a music educator. Well. First of all, I make sure that you know how to mount and dismount. You know how they say uh, when you get into your show? So basically, I'm performance. I'm, there's Everybody else is music theory, piano. Uh, we got the Thelonious Monk Institute, too. But I'm about performance. And what, what, what are you going to do when you get up there? How are you going to make me believe your story? Tell me a story. Gretchen Parlata, you know she was? Uh -huh. She was my first student 20 really? years ago. And uh, what do you think Isn't of the she? work she does now? She's very emotive and expressive when she's singing. Uh, she's off the hook. <laughs> she's off the hook. I respect her. Well, Barbara, can you just give us a little um, hint of uh, what the future looks like for you? What kind of things are you uh, planning or I'm are you dreaming to about Broadway. doing? I'm headed to Broadway. 
I'm headed to Broadway. That's my goal. My goal is to add some dancers to the show. You're gonna, are you going to come see the show tonight? Tonight, some, I'm some going to be right there uh, with you. Well, uh, I want to add some some dancers to the show. And in January, I'm going to take the whole band in New York to APAC. And we're going to experience the people coming around saying, Oh, yeah, okay, well, that's good. Man, yeah, we don't like that. We're going to go through that and see if we can get to some of the performing arts centers around the country. And that's why I wanted to bring my band here today, so they can have a nice, lovely experience. And, um, that's why I want to go. Excellent. Well, where can folks find out more about you and keep up with uh, what you've got going on? BarbaraMorrison.com. That's my website. And Barbara Morrison, PAC. That's for the Performing Arts Center, PAC. And BarbaraMorrison.com is my own personal website. So, yeah, get on the web and come and hang out with me. Well, it's an honor to have you, Barbara, here again, and we hope it's not five more years <laughs> before we see you again, but thank you so much for being here tonight thank at you. Jazz Live San Diego. Thank you, Vince. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> keeping, keeping it. Thank you, Mike. Excellent. Thank you, Barbara. Again, I got that ID, so don't worry about that.